The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, out of whom our hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. We beseech the Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants, and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defence against all our enemies, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and hast forgiven the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, willingly lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. For fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving them thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. But no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, and righteousness, and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the eleventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the fourteenth verse. Jesus was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. 
But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come on you. When a strong man armored keep his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come unto him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me is scattered. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and finding none, he said, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he finds it swept and garnished. Then he goes in and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paths which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God and his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance to the Father, by whom all things were made, who for our sending of our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was a man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in the glory of judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus' discourse in today's Gospel about what happens when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man is not a first century A.D. Dear Abbey advice column for budding exorcists. What Jesus is doing is warning us that we are not in the greatest danger from Satan when we're burdened with our sins, but when we feel particularly pious. It was his response to a bunch of Pharisees who confronted him after witnessing him restore the power of speech to a man who was dumb. The Bible tells us that he did so by casting out an evil spirit that was preventing the man from speaking. Some people might have trouble with the whole notion of evil spirits, but that's quite irrelevant to the issues raised by the incident. The bare facts of the case, which can be affirmed by all parties, are that the man was unable to speak before meeting Jesus, and that his powers of speech had been miraculously restored during that encounter. Funnily enough, it was not the miracle of healing itself that upset the Pharisees. It was the way in which he performed it. Jesus tended to perform his miracles in the most casual and offhand fashion. And quite clearly, the Pharisees found this laid-back attitude acutely disturbing. It was not that they were looking for Hollywood-like treatment. They did not want him to behave like a charlatan but they did expect him to treat the business of healing with reverence. After all, it was God's work, and a few prayers would not have been out of place. Prayers, however, are usually conspicuous by absence from Jesus' miracles of healing. Sometimes he looked heavenward, but when he does, 
it seems to be not so much as an appeal for divine assistance as an expression of, like, here we go again. In any event, on this occasion, he does not seem to have uttered a prayer. Rather, he appears to have operated in his customary offhand fashion. You know, this sort of thing like, get lost, spirit. Go ahead, friend, speak. And the fact that he did not offer a prayer before or after performing the miracle genuinely offended the Pharisees. In fact, it offended them so much, well, it might be as if uh, for us, um, example, during the Eucharist, the priest, instead of reciting the prayer of consecration, just casually waved his hands over the bread and wine and said, Shazam! Be body and blood. It would be sheer blasphemy for an ordinary human to act like that. Only one person is entitled to act like that, and that's God. The Pharisees, you see, were deeply religious people, and they were entirely sincere. They were, like so many others who shared their beliefs, perfectly willing to accept Jesus as the Messiah. And why shouldn't they? He fulfilled all the spiritual prophecies concerning the Messiah, including his miracles of healing, making the lame walk, the blind to see, deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. But even though they were perfectly prepared to accept Jesus as the Messiah, they were not ready to recognize him as the Son of God. As I pointed out last week, they firmly believed the Messiah would be a human being, a most exalted human being, of course, like the great King David, even more magisterial but still human, nevertheless. And they, of course, failed to recognize him. The very notion that this human person whom they knew to be Jesus bar Joseph from the insignificant town of Nazareth, the unfashionable province of Galilee, that he could behave like the Son of God was not merely outlandish, it was immodest, and it was utterly sacrilegious. Jesus was aware of this. He made it plain he was performing the miracles entirely on his own authority as a constant assertion, a proclamation, if you will, of his divinity. Every miracle he performed confronted his audience with accepting him either as divine or the greatest blasphemer that ever walked the face of the earth. Well, that was just fine for the average guy whose religious beliefs were superstitious enough to accept him as some sort of holy master or healing angel. But for serious theological scholars, it was extremely difficult to accept his divinity. They knew God is a spirit. Therefore, it was unthinkable for God to appear in human gods. And if Jesus was not drawing on God's power to Perform his miracles of healing, he had to be drawing on someone else's, and the only other person capable of dispensing such supernatural power was Satan. Thus it was not ignorance or vain superstition that prompted the Pharisees to accuse Jesus of healing in Satan's name. It was their own sophisticated theological analysis of the scriptures. Jesus pointed out to them that the serious flaw in their reasoning, namely, if Jesus let people use his power to cast out devils, he would not be in business for very long. He then pointed out that Jesus cast out evil spirits on his own authority. Logic dictated that he was divine. If I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. He then warned them that their pride and their piety and theological knowledge made them arrogant and placed them in grave spiritual danger. Their smug self-confidence encouraged them to identify God's standards, God's thoughts and ways with their own. This in turn was preventing them 
from recognizing the very person who's coming to him so eagerly that I wait. Thankfully, in the church today are unlikely to encounter priests who wave their hands over the bread and wine and say, Shazam, become the body and blood of Christ. And even if we do, it's highly unlikely that we will, like those unfortunate Pharisees, we'll be staring into the face of God. Currently, it's much more likely to be an actual shaman or bush doctor. The problems that we face are much more mundane. Thinking ill of our neighbors, harboring paranoid suspicions about the motives of people who make a habit of lending a helping hand. Whatever the case, Jesus gives us the same warning he gave the Pharisees. It was dangerous, not to say decidedly arrogant, to assume we possess a monopoly on the truth. We should not set ourselves up in judgment of others. We should not confuse God ways with our own. We should judge people not by our own personal standards, but by the actual fruits of their labors. Who knows? We might just find the folks we initially despise are an awful lot more Christian than we are. Amen. Why is God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever? Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Partakers of thy heavenly kingdom, 
Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. <coughs> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, but our heart is sorry of things our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all this past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins unto all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ that unto all who do return to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and no, live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, and sound in the heart. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy great manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, precious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear by his blood the oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction to the sins of the whole world. 
and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. In the body of love, our Lord Jesus Christ, bless thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. As our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Provide us the kingdom power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries, where we spit most of spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And just assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. 
You are also heirs of the hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. We most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be your honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long. Until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done, then in thy mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm.